I decided to do a short video on this uh, GBS control project that I tried here. And a few years back when I started getting old hardware, I got the Amiga 1000 and I picked this up off of eBay, the uh, GBS 8200 for like 16 bucks, 17 bucks. And it worked fairly well for what I needed it for, but it wasn't perfect. The screen was, uh, had a lot of artifacts and noise and things in it. And kind of sat on the shelf for a while. And then recently I just saw where someone made a new controller for it, where you bypass the, the chip on the board and you use uh, Arduino. This is a uh, ESP8266. Uh, it's got a Wi-Fi module on it. And you essentially connect to it through Wi-Fi to so the way you access setting. it is through your web browser. By default, it has its own web server that will come up and you can either connect to it ad hoc or you can connect it to your network. I decided just to connect it to my network because I don't plan on using it anywhere but here. But uh, essentially you have all the different things you can change here. The one thing that's caused a little bit of frustration is the Wi-Fi disconnecting. And it, sometimes you'll be messing with your settings, trying to just try out different stuff and see how it works. And uh, your the Wi-Fi will disconnect. And then you can't get it to reconnect. You shut everything off, turn it back on. What I find fixes it is if you unplug the input. It's my understanding that this chip under certain conditions puts off frequencies that interfere with the Wi-Fi module. And the suggestion was to move this a little bit further away from it. There's some uh, boards you can make where it snaps it right on top of this chip and it was putting that in pro closer proximity to that. And uh, But even though I've got mine out of the way, it still seems to be getting some interference somehow. And there's always the possibility that there's something else going on that I'm not aware of. The thing that impressed of. me the most about this is that you could run the Amiga in high-res interlace and then have it on the screen and there's no flicker. It's like it's not going to cause a seizure or anything. And uh, most of the artifacts are gone. There might be a few little things here and there. I notice like if you move the mouse real fast, like maybe near a border, you might get a little bit of something. But uh, like this is uh, 1280 by, let's say 400, I believe is what it said at. And uh, I'm just really impressed. That's what pretty much sold the me. The only mods so I've done to this board, as far as trying to incre increase the visual quality, is I've uh, removed the C11 here. And with this mod, you have to put a 100 ohm resistor between ground and sink for the impedance. And the board I had, or I have, um, he's got a few examples on his wiki and the one I have is not on there. So there might be some differences with mine. Because I did try doing the mod where you put some, uh, I think it's 10 microfarad in parallel with some of the other or capacitors on here. And that actually almost made it unusable. So I took those off because I don't know, I either did it wrong or uh, maybe this one, the capacitor values are correct. So I don't know. Um, this one, it's not copper foil, but aluminum foil tape. That's no longer needed because I guess that's he corrects that in the software. So I suggest if you've already got one of these, go on eBay and spend four bucks for that. I'll put the links to the uh, GitHub and the wiki and stuff. It's pretty straightforward if you're the least bit familiar with Arduino or messing with electronics at all. But uh, I highly recommend it doing it. Uh, like I said, the only thing I had a problem with was it gets kind of frustrating is losing connection while you're trying to change your settings. But hey, I could live with it. It, it still functions when it's not connected. Like it works. It's just you can't 
get to it to adjust the settings. So your mileage may vary, but like I said, uh, I'd pick one of those up and try it out. Thanks for watching.